My mom would sometimes call me while an episode of television that I did is on at a commercial break and ask if there's more. <gasps> but I will tell you, by and large, 99 times out of 100, I bring my fucking dog shit home with me, wow. as does my boyfriend, and I sprinkle it on some orecchietti pasta. I'm gonna f- <laughs> I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. Hello and welcome to the 100th episode of Is This Good? The show where we boldly, conclusively, and scientifically decide what things in this big wide world are good. I'm Matt Austin, and with me, as always, is production powerhouse Jason Doyle. Hello. Hi, JD. Thanks for coming. And today's guest is an actor, comedian, writer, producer, and acoustic guitarist. You know her from the Emmy Award-winning TV series Glow and Netflix's Best Leftovers Ever. She's a returning Is This Good champion who stole the hearts of listeners everywhere when she uttered those six wonderful words, PPS, poo-poo, no. (laughs) It's Jackie Tone. Jackie, welcome back to Is This Good? Oh, PBS poo poo. No. <laughs> uh, that was, of course, in response to asking you uh, if you use the bathroom in front of your partner, the restroom in front of your partner. You said PBS poo poo. No. Do people oh. just come up to you in the streets and, and shout that at you? They actually, what's crazy is they shit at my feet now. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I guess it's like their way. It's like trolling me. Oh, yeah. yeah just you. Yeah. You're the only person that would be upset if someone shat at their feet. Mm. Yeah, I know. Most people love that. Everyone else, totally cool with it. Totally into it. It happened at Trader Joe's this morning when I was getting a subpar loaf of sourdough. <laughs> well, I was gonna, I was gonna say this is a big day for you because not only are you on the 100th episode of Is This Good, you also <gasps> went to the grocery store for the first time in two weeks. Let's give it up for Jackie. You guys, I have been so fucking sick that it actually is weird like i probably got to day like seven eight and i was like this is crazy like i went to urgent care i was like this can't be this can't be just the way people normally get sick now and it wasn't covid and did you know that they can test for the flu yes i did know that because when you when you test for covid now they test for the flu as well did not know that and so they tested me for the flu and covid i had the flu and then they gave me the tamiflu stuff and it was gnarly the end. What, what what does that do exactly? Um, I think it's an antiviral, and so I, I honestly I don't know. I was so sick. I just and I'm not a huge overtaking medicine person, but I they gave it to me, and I was like anything to make me feel better, and I took it, and I I guess it worked. I mean, it worked. I don't know if I would have just gotten better anyway because it's the flu, and I would have healed. I need to tell you guys something so gross that I don't even know (laughs) how to say this, but... Just say it. Just say it. It's a discovery I'm making in real time, and I shouldn't even say it, because if I was listening to this pod and I was driving, I would pull over and fucking gag at what I'm about to tell you. (laughs) Okay, I might gag, but go ahead. You're going to. My boyfriend and I got this amazing vintage roll top desk at... Um, St. Vincent de Paul and we looked it up online and truly like the one in this condition real wood actually old like it's three four five thousand dollars and we spent it was fifty nine ninety nine at St. Vincent's de Paul uh that's not the gross part the gross part is that I cleaned it top to toe and I just leaned my head I'm gonna fucking vomit (laughs) over this little part of the desk right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the roll top Mm -hmm. clicks in. There's human fingernails in there. (laughs) (laughs) There's human fingernails inside there. Okay, what do you... Can you see that? Oh, no, we can't see it, but... Well, I don't know. Maybe we can see it once we once we enhance in yeah, post production. Yeah, I can see it clear as day. <laughs> oh, I that's a, a fingernail. That's a that's a toenail. That's enormous. 
I'm gonna. F- <laughs> I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> I clean this thing till it shine like the top of the Chrysler Building, <laughs> and I missed human nails. I don't know what to do. What are you more upset about? The fact that there's a human nail in it or that you're not as good at cleaning as you thought you were? <laughs> it's a combo. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a column A, column B. Okay, well, if you can... Now, Jackie, think... you've been through worse, okay? You, you're you a professional actor. You've been on sets that have been less than ideal. It's cold outside and you're supposed to be just in a t-shirt because it's, you know, it's summer, but it's really winter. It's day for night, whatever the terms you people use on set. This can't be the worst thing that's ever happened to you. You can push through. It's, gr- it, I'm just, I'm actually very grossed out. There's like two, okay. Okay, anyway, um, is this good? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not good. Okay, okay. Um, any, any highlights that have happened to you since the last time you did this show? It was almost exactly a year ago. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, it's a little more than a year. Some fun highlight, like career highlights or life highlights. My boyfriend moved in November 1st. Okay, congratulations. Thank you, mage, mage highlight. Um, And so now we have his dog, Harry, who's our dog, 60-pound pit bull named Harry, who's really edible. His ears are made of paper flaps. And (laughs) my dog, Glenn, is here. And Glenn is a small boy whose ears also... Uh made his paper flaps and um (laughs) we're having a nice time uh except for the fact that you know it was nice i had a really i've been so lucky i've been having a really busy december and random like hosting gigs and this and that and having a nice time and i was doing i mean way too much and then i got sick so but now i'm finally better Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I guess so. If he moved into your place, that means that by definition, your place was better than his. I mean, th- yes, but also like that was sort of the deal because he lived in an apartment and I um, was lucky enough to buy a house a couple years ago. And so it was like it, it wasn't like we didn't pick between apartments. It was like a fairly, yeah, nice upgrade for both of us. Speaking of buying a house, JD and I were both doing the uh, DiCaprio pointing at the TV meme when we watched Old Dads, not together, on Netflix, great streaming platform. And who was, who sh- appeared but a post, uh, a, well, a pre-strike Jackie Tone. It was, it was wonderful. It was a pre-strike JT being absolutely cantankerous and curmudgeon and terrible. What a terrible person she is. But how was it hanging out with uh, with Billy Burr and Bobby C and and all the luminaries on that set? <laughs> the gang, you know, it was so delicious. Everybody was so I don't know, it's so trite to me. Like everyone was incredible. It was great to work with them. But like it was <laughs> great. It's Bill Burr and Bobby Cannavale and Katie Azelton and. It was just, Bill is such a mensch. I mean, when he was editing, he was texting me how great it was coming out and how much he loved my scenes and how it was like, killing people. And it was like, you're Bill Burr. You don't have to like go out of your way to text. I mean, you know, at that point, probably, you know, just one of your actors and just being like, dude, I remember being in a convenience store in New York City and getting a text and it was he was like, hey, Jackie, it's Bill. And I was like, Bill Burr got my number. This is like, it's, it was just, he's just such a mensch. And Bobby is absolutely just, he's exactly what you think he is. He's just like a, he's like a piece of pie in human form. He's just like, he's so sweet. He's so handsome. He's so, he's like soft spoken, but he's very New York. He's just absolutely delicious. It was the best. Well, but I would, if you say he's exactly what you think he is, I would think he has a bit of an edge to him. Oh, interesting. I always felt like he was so sweet. Like the shape of his features is so sweet and he's so sweet. But like, yeah, he's like a tough New Yorky guy, but he's just like very sweet. Also, I mean, his character in the movie was so submissive and kind yeah. of such a little bitch that I guess that rubbed off too, that he just was like the sweetest puppy dog eyed guy ever. Yeah, he seems very sweet. But yeah, he does seem like uh, New York. He seems like he could take a punch. He's got a good chin. I think that's uh, 
what people call it. He's got a good chin. Great chins. What, let's rank the chins on this Zoom right now. Guys, nice. Tr- you want to play? You want to fucking chin with me? You want to? I am Jay Leno, baby. You want to play a chin off <laughs> on this Zoom with me? What are you out of your fucking mind? You must have never seen my profile, Austin. <laughs> Look at that thing. Oh. I'm taking out eyes this side of the fucking river, baby. <laughs> Look at that thing. Is it is it true <laughs> that you've never touched your Tonight Show money? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And I have uh, a lot of cars, and that's all I know about myself, my, me, Jay Leno. Uh, no, you, you also, you, Jay Leno, also wear a lot of double denim. We mm-hmm. all know that. I love double denim. And me, Jay Leno bought Kristen Bell's child a tiny, um, I think it was a Tesla, a miniature, like little electronic children's car, Tesla, I think. Like a Power Wheels? Like the old, like uh, it used to be like the tiny yeah. little Jeep, you know what I mean? That I would always be yeah. jealous that people had. Yeah. And I never, I still never been in one. Same. And guess what? It's too late. I have to go into into their regular line of, of Jeeps. I can't even I go know. in the Hot Wheels it's anymore. A- <laughs> It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. I'm completely with you. I didn't have one either as a kid. Me neither. Okay, so so now Kristen Bell's kid, uh, I, who I, I if I'm not mistaken, you are friends with the her, not the kid, has a a tiny little Both. Tesla. Wow. This is... Well, this is a long time ago. I mean, this was when Jay was on the air and her daughter was young enough to be. I mean, her daughter could barely fit in one of them anymore. One is ten and one is eight, so they're not really fitting in those either. Damn, they grow up so fast. Eh. No, oh, boys. Not, yeah, a fan but... of, not a fan of Conan. That's my. That's me, Jay Leno, talking. That's, Had to pull that's that us, out. Jay Leno. Had, no one does a Jay Leno. You never hear that impression. It's it's really under the radar. No, no, no. I never have. Uh, no, I never. <laughs> this is the first one. <laughs> uh, let's it's do a crazy. quick bit of housekeeping. Um, if you'd like to support the show, go to patreon.com slash is this good. You'll get ad free episodes. Jackie's showing us her dog right now. Uh, you'll get access to our thriving community on Discord. You'll get an exclusive episode every month. And you get our Christmas themed playlist. Jackie, what favorite Christmas song? You want to shut one up as a Jew? Yeah, I do. But I also want everybody to know that you're never going to see my son, Glenn, unless you support the Patreon because he's going to be Glenn is behind a permanent paywall well unfortunately the YouTube is available uh, to the public for free but (laughs) unless we just cut this part out and put it behind the paywall yeah I can Um, blur out Glenn I can blur out Glenn yeah I am Glenn I only (laughs) got some money um (laughs) famous Christmas song no, no, fa- favorite Christmas song, not famous. Oh, is that what I said? I meant favorite. Yeah. Hey, guys, there's a nail in my desk. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to. I'm trying not to pay attention to it. It's a human nail. It's a human's. It's a human's really. Co- okay. Um, my favorite Christmas song, and I don't know why this is an ongoing bit, and it goes on during the year as well, not just for Christmas. I ask my boyfriend if he's ever heard this song and then I say I think I thought of it but I'm not sure have you heard of this hark if the bells if the, the bells are ringing the bells having the bells oh and the bells hail the bells bells of the bells and that happens <laughs> I'm gonna <try> this <laughs> three times a week <laughs> this poor man I ask him if he's heard that and then I pretend I wrote it and then he says he thinks he heard it. And I go, oh, okay. And then we do something else. Well, I'm sure he's pretty psyched he moved in. Uh, probably not, not regretting that. So yeah, also, yeah, yeah. I think the nail might push him over the edge. He might be moving back to his apartment. Uh, you know, you want to hear my, I... uh, my version of that bit that you just did? Please. Okay. So I go, um, yeah, have you heard that Christmas song um, about the, the Jewish guy? No. You, you, yeah, right? I say, yeah, I think it's called um, God Rest Ye Jerry Mendelssohn. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> okay, that you can, again, you can have that one. Um, okay. Yeah, that's, that's for the free. Bells, up of the bells, up of the bells, up of the bells, up of the bells. <laughs> and the lyrics are only of, of the bells. Mm. I mean, what, but it's... are there... Uh, what are the lyrics? Something the bells. Carol the bells? It's, I, it's, it's like, not hark, 
Sweet silver bells all seem to say, throw cares away, Christmas is here, bringing us cheer. I mean, it, there's tons of lyrics, and in my version, it's only of the bells, of, of the bells. No, but you are kind of doing a 2003-style mashup of uh, Carol the Bells and Hark the Herald Angel Sing, because you keep saying Hark, or are you not saying Hark? I say Hark up top, you're right. Yeah. Anyways, look, we're, we're discovering, we're discovering things. And good news, Jackie, it's Friendly December here on the show. And Friendly December, all that means is you got to tell three people to listen to this show. So actually, now you have to do that, too. And oh. Glenn, even though Great. it's a human name, does not count. Glenn behind a paywall. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, Jackie, the premise of the show, it's, it's very simple. As you know, you've been on it before. I'm going to give you a topic. You tell me if it's good. But for the 100th episode, I went back and dug into the back catalog. And we're going to do some classic Is This Good topics that I think you would have a pin, an opinion on. And even though I asked these to different guests sometimes a year or over a year ago, I'd like to hear what you think about them. So let's get started here. And the first one, speaking of Glenn behind the paywall, throwing your dog's poop bag in someone else's trash. So you are walking the Glenmeister and Glenn poops and you pick up the bag. You I mean, Hopefully you pick up the poop. And then you say to yourself, do I twirl this around like a cane till I get home and throw it out in my own trash? Or I see someone else's trash. Do I just deposit it in there? What do you think? Well, you are correct that I have a strong opinion on this. Now, mm -hmm. It is as follows. I think, because I am in my neighborhood, I know the garbage gets picked up on Friday. So if the garbage man just comes and people's cans are out, you have to be a fucking monster <laughs> to put your freshly laid, smelly, disgusting shit into someone else's can when the garbage just came. That's bullshit. Mm -hmm. But... Yes. If it's like Thursday evening and you're walking the dog and you know the garbage is coming in the morning and they've already got their rotten milk and their trash and whatever else and they're already disgusting smelling garbage can, it's a different story. Now, where you catch me, and I will do this, is we're talking midweek now. We're talking midweek. Mm -hmm. We're talking right. it's a Monday, Tuesday. Trash isn't coming till Friday. I open the can. Nothing in there. I don't dare. I open the can, a smell comes out, maybe a little fucking, their trash is already in there and it already kind of smells like shit. Maybe. But I will tell you, by and large, 99 times out of 100, I bring my fucking dog shit home with me. Wow. As does my boyfriend. And I sprinkle it on some orecchietti pasta. No, I take it home with us and I have a special carbon neutralizing dog shit trash can in the driveway and my boyfriend and I take the shit home and we put it in our own miniature carbon neutralizing dog shit trash can because that's wow. the level of good Samaritan ship we are bringing to the people of Glendale. Oh my God, you should take it to the next step and put a sign there saying, this is a carbon neutral, smell free garbage. Please put your dog shit in here. Like, embrace it. Are you out of your mind? I want to deal with your shit now because I'm a good Samaritan. <laughs> I mean- Get your own fucking can. <laughs> That's okay, good. fine. You don't want to be a good neighbor. That's up to you. I, I also want to bring up this topic because it is, it is an you area- You want to be a good neighbor. Oh, okay. <laughs> She is being a good neighbor. Thank you, JD. She is taking her shit all the way through the neighborhood, carrying it and depositing it in her own receptacle on her own property. That is the very definition of being a good neighbor. It's like doing my own recycling, but not doing yours. So I'm a That's bad right. neighbor. Like, do, <laughs> do your own life. Not my fucking problem. <laughs> okay. Well, that's uh, rude. But I also wanted to bring this topic up because... I have I've experienced growth in this department because when we first talked about this on the show, I said we should be doing this because there's no public uh, trash cans anymore, or I, certainly not where I live, and nope. it's just a sort of like, it's a mutually assured destruction. If we, we all do it, we'll just, where the dog poops, you see a bin there, you put it in, shit is shit, 
shit is garbage. Garbage is in the garbage. Is it really that different? So if it's if it's garbage, why couldn't you put poop in it? But now that I have a, a dog and I have been doing this, I've I've started to follow your rule, really, without even knowing that was your rule. If it's the day of the garbage, I'll put it in. But if it's not, and I look in and it's empty, even though those people are lazy and have left their garbage out in a place where I can easily <laughs> access it, it does seem it does seem rude. And also, there's a little thing in the back of my head where I'm going, I don't want that guy to walk out of his house and go, hey, what are you doing out there? <laughs> well, by the way, two things. First of all, I do think we need to factor in that if you don't put your cans away, like, put your cans away. That's another annoying neighbor thing. People are having to drive by. And I mean, especially on my street, it's like, excuse me, a barely, barely two cars can go on it. So if you're leaving your cans out, people are having to like pull over back down a hill. It's a whole thing. So as punishment alone, I should be putting my dog shit in your cans, but that's separate. And I still, well, yeah. But the second thing I was going to say, but the second thing I was going to say is before I was a dog owner, no, this can't be before it was a dog owner because I had to have dog shit, but maybe I had an ex-boyfriend who had a dog. I don't remember. But either way, I was in... Oh, no, no, no. I had Glenn with me. And I was in Florida visiting my parents and in, like, not gross people, Florida, but whatever. It's all rough down there. <laughs> um, uh, and I threw Glenn's shit on garbage day into a woman's trash across the street... And, oh, no, my mom's next door neighbor, and I know that she has two dogs. And so I was like, oh, I opened it. There was already dog shit in there from her dogs. And this was over COVID, and I was staying with my parents for, like, two months. So I, like, kind of knew the neighbors. I Glenn had played with their dogs and whatever. So I knew they had two dogs, and I knew that it was garbage day. And I threw Glenn's shit in their trash, and a lady came out of her house an old lady from across the street and was like, you can't be screaming just like you said. You can't be doing that. What are you doing? And I, of course, got super condescending and I was like, oh, I'm, um, I'm throwing the, um, I'm throwing the, uh, the garbage in, inside of the gar, inside of the garbage. I'm, uh, going ahead and, uh, you see, I'm, uh, simply putting the trash into the, uh, the, the, the trash, you see. Uh, and I got so fucking condescending with her because she was screaming bloody murder. Then the woman called the lady of the house where I put the, where I put the poop. And I was already inside that woman's house because I had knocked on her door and been like, hey, Miriam, there's a gal across the street really shouting at me i just wanted you to know i know you have the two dogs and that it's garbage and i put it and she goes yeah where else are you gonna put it but <laughs> as i walk in the door the lady from across the street is calling to tell on me the end okay you know what i'm what i'm, what I'm taking from this story lady with the jewish voice that you did nice lady with the non-jewish voice <laughs> not as nice i got good i got good news for you 100 percent jews in the story okay <laughs> that's good wow. Hundred um, percent. I'm talking about. I'm talking about a uh, an a 55 and over community in West Palm in uh, Florida. You think there's you think there's non Jews in this story? Oh, I'll be there. I'll be there in three days from now, Jackie. So I'm. <laughs> that's, well, that's I'm, right. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> By the way, thank you for being such a great ambassador for um, liberal Democratic California when you go to Florida, and yeah. and not being exactly the kind of condescending person that they think we all are. So I do I do appreciate that. Yes. Um, that's you're gonna God, you're gonna cause the civil war that happens in that new A twenty four movie I just saw the trailer for. All right, we don't have time <laughs> to get into imagine? that. Moving on, uh, meeting. Your husband on a reality dating show. Is this good? Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm asking you this. Well, A, because I already asked someone. We had a person on the show named Georgia Love. She's Australian. She was on season two of The Australian Bachelorette. So she was The Bachelorette. She had, whatever, 18 dudes. The guy she picked, they got married, and they're still married years later, very happy, going to go the distance. And I know in the first show we did, you... We're on American Idol, which obviously is not a dating show, but you have some reality experience. So I want to know, is this something that you think is good, that you believe could actually happen to you, that you could go on a reality dating show and actually 
marry this guy. Can I ask you guys really quick? Did I make this up or does this already exist? Hawk of the bells, off of the bells, off of the bells, off of the bells, off of the bells. It's not ringing a bell. It's not ringing a bell. (laughs) Okay, so I think I I did make that up. Okay, so as far as... (laughs) Dating, Mar- I think it's great. I think anywhere, I think anywhere you can meet someone you like and then love and are attracted to and want to spend your life with and your time with. I, I don't really know. I'm trying to think of a of a yum I could yuck. That like I'm very much. As long as it's illegal and you're not a creep, it's like, find someone anywhere. I mean, I remember I was always a very, very in-person. This is sort of like a dating app, slight left turn to come back to the topic. But I was always like, when those first came out and Tinder, and I was like, I'm out constantly. I'm... Go, I'm do, doing shows and hanging out with people and have a very lucky to have had a bustling social life. And the idea that I would meet someone in my brain all like through a robot on a computer was absolutely insane. And I met my boyfriend on Hinge and all it really did was bring two people who would have never met otherwise together to realize that they love each other and think the other one is cool. And if you're doing that through like a dating show, I mean, it sounds... The odds are so stacked against you for that to work out that if it works out, like, go great. There, there's artifice in a reality show, right? So, like, there's a certain fakeness, maybe people playing things up, maybe people having too much of a persona that you can't really trust the, the sort of love you feel. It's also kind of like summer camp, you know, Jackie? You, you went to summer camp probably, maybe? Of course. Like, where, where it feels so intense because over a short period of time? Yes, I, see, I, I, totally, but... My my thing then is, okay, so if it doesn't stand the test of time, it doesn't stand the test of time. But your example is that it did. And so it's like, yes, it's very summer campy. Yes, the emotions are very heightened. Yes, the odds are stacked completely not in your favor against you. And But if it works, it works. It's like there's no... I, I don't know how... This is an interesting is this good because... I don't see how you say no if, like, it worked. I'm not saying, do, if the question is, do I think generally people meet on dating, on reality shows and work out? No, I watch Love Island. I don't think that. But did it for Georgia Love. Right, right, right. It's it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So, yeah. Because I was saying meeting your husband. Well, she met her husband. Why why would we say that's bad? Right. I should have worded it differently. You'd think that after 100 episodes, I'd be better at this. But... I'm not. Uh, or you can tell us at the end. What no. You think. Uh, no. Well, that that's uh, that's great. Uh, all right. So then let's move on to another topic I thought you might be inter- interested in, because speaking of old dads, this was sort of uh, part of the plot. Disciplining other people's kids. I know that you don't have a child mm. of your own, but, you know, you, you got into that character pretty deep. Uh, you've seen other people's parenting styles. Hell, you might have been at a birthday party where a kid's being a real shit. And you want to slap their hands and say, stop picking your nose and putting them in the chip bowl. (laughs) Uh, So what do you think about this one? Disciplining other people's kids. Is this good? It's such a hard one. It's such a hard one because I feel so many ways about it. I think my overall feeling is don't do not. Is this good? No, don't Mm -hmm. do this. The flip side is... Uh, like I have, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of this family, very close family friends that I grew up with and ev- there are two sisters and then the mom is my mom's age, the grandma. And so both of the sisters have two kids each and it's almost impossible to discern who is whose kid, who is teaching what to who, who. it's, there's so much cross raising and finger point. It's like, it it, it stresses me out when I'm around them. It's like, there's like each kid has three or four mothers telling them what to do, where to go, what to eat, wash your hands, get you this. It's like, it's too much, but none of them seem 
to mind because they all do it. And then if one of them was told to not do it, then the other ones wouldn't be able to do it. So either way, no, it's annoying. But what I was going to say is I can't, I could see it getting to a point where like you can't be around those people. Like mm -hmm. in, in old dads, for example, um, Katie's character is pregnant and my son smacks the belly and she's like, you know, Colin, don't do that. And it's like, well, obviously any normal person would be like, I am so sorry. Oh my God. And like pick the kid up and reprimand the kid. But my character doesn't do that. She's like, don't tell me how to parent. And so it's like, that's a very special example where like, we would all agree maybe don't parent someone else's kid, but if you have if you've raised such a shit pig that they bash a pregnant woman in the belly, <laughs> all bets are off and it's like okay, get your child away from me. You're going to you're putting my pregnancy in danger. That's a different level. My other thought was, oh, that I could see this like greatly affecting friendships because you right. you can't really do it but then the only other option is to extricate yourself from the situation and like not hang out with that person and their kid okay that's i thought of one more thing um uh my best friend has two kids who i'm kristen who i mentioned has two daughters and when one of them was little she was driving a baby children's motorcycle down the stairs. Hold on, the same people that have a tiny Tesla? <laughs> yes. Okay. And she's driving a little children's motorcycle down the stairs or around the backyard or whatever. Uh, that's what it was, around the backyard. And she got close to the stairs. And I came running outside and I was like, Lincoln, Lincoln, be careful, be careful. Um. And then Kristen came running out and she was like, oh, she is good. Um, we don't we don't tell them to be careful. That's like not a thing in this house. And I was like, oh, OK. And she and I laugh about this now because like I just blatantly got my ass handed to me because I was raised <laughs> by the most like, be careful, don't do that, don't touch it, don't do that, don't do that. It's everything is be careful. <laughs> and the neuroses is so real. And she was like, What's the worst that's going to happen? She like falls off it a little bit. She has a helmet on. She's got all her pads on. She's going to fall this much. And then she'll realize herself that she shouldn't have done that. And it's just interesting because in that instance, I wasn't obviously trying to parent my friend's kid. I was just trying to make sure that she didn't die on my watch. And here my friend was then like, oh, she wasn't bitchy about it or anything. But she was like, oh, no, we're good. Like, it's fine. You don't. And then never again have I ever done that to her kids or any of my friend's kids because that's like, you know, you realize you, I don't know what's going on. You're, you're the parent. Do you? I'll go inside and pretend I don't see. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess it just, we all just need Kristen Bell to yell at us once. And then, you know, a lot of aberrant behavior could be solved. Yeah. She carries a big stick. That kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> um, have you changed your mind on this at all, JD? You can't punish other people's kids, but we need to start normalizing what Jackie did, which is, confronting the parents about it like you got to be like hey your kid's being an asshole you got to do something about it or get out of this party mike you, your kid yeah. can't be doing this kind of shit That's yeah all. you're from you're from the uh, it takes a village school of parenting the hillary clinton school of parenting she did a That's wonderful right. job with chelsea you know <laughs> why not <laughs> that's exactly right uh all right jackie let's move on to the next topic here getting someone's autograph is this good now I know the autograph is sort of obsolete, and it's now the the selfie. Um, but perhaps you could you could tell us from both sides because you've seen a lot of famous people, and I, I want to know kind of what your policy is for taking pictures with them. And then also, I assume that you have been asked to be taken photos with. So, um, what's it like from both sides of the coin? It's a great one. It's a great question. So, I. I'm at a place in my career where I, like when I was on Glow, it was happening a lot more. Um, I like it. I didn't get a steady acting job and haven't had one since. But I mean, I'm, here and there, cool stuff has come up, but like nothing like Glow. And um, it was semi-regular that people would stop me or us or me and the Glow girls and I always loved it. Um, I think a big part of that was um, 
many fold. One, Glow was such a cool, weird show that the people that liked Glow, I, I can't think of an annoying, sort of creepy hanger on who stayed too long. Mm-hmm. I can't think of a single one in all the years. Like, it just was cool rad badass bitches being like yo i fucking love glow can i be annoying and take a picture and i'm like this is cooler for me than it is for you baby like (laughs) i've wanted this my whole life i finally have like a thing people give a shit about this rules um on the flip side of that i've been out to lunch with like with with very famous people who in that moment I'm not thinking of as famous people and people are taking pictures of them or whispering and they can't eat. And it's just like, it is so fucking unpleasant and weird and you feel like you're being watched and you know that you're being watched and it, it just sucks. And I know that as much as John Q. Public is like, you signed up for this, I guess if you're going to make $5 million a movie, you have to be uncomfortable at a lunch sometimes. Feels like a fair trade-off. It's like, okay, I get I get that angle. It's It sucks. It's so weird. You, like, can't be a person. Also, no matter how much money I make, doesn't give you the right to be weird at a brunch. It, the fact that, the, that it feels like the public's entitlement to famous people of like, oh, you don't make enough money for, it's like, what does one have to do with the other? I'm trying to have a waffle. It's like, it's not, and I'm not nearly famous enough for it to affect me that way. Um, But I think as a person in this business for, uh, you know, 30 something years, it's, um, yeah, I just think it's, it's hard. Cause I was going to say, I think it's a little cringe, But it's like, it Mm -hmm. is exciting. It's like, perfect example. And my boyfriend and I talk about this all the time. Um, When famous people fan out on each other and want pictures with each other, it's like all of a sudden all bets are off and that's totally fine. Like if you're mega famous and fucking Bradley Cooper's like, dude, I just like, I just say I fucking love you. And like, I watch it happen on, on the Howard Stern show. It's like how how fan out they each get and how the guests always yeah. the guests are like the most famous people in the world and they want a picture with Howard and Howard wants a picture with them and it's like at that level it's obviously not annoying because there's like a sense of mutual respect but any less famous than that it's like oh that's what I was going to say god I'm fucking on one remind me not to listen back <laughs> to this and to hate myself but um the uh, I met uh, I was at a Netflix party a couple years ago, and I was sitting next to Norman Lear. Okay. And Sasha oh, Baron R. Cohen R. sat down. And and Sasha Baron Cohen sat down next to us. And I wow. thought, I'm sitting on a tufted ottoman at Ted Sarando's house with Norman Lear and Sasha Baron Cohen, and I actually felt a lot of Jewish pride in the moment because I know how proud Norman is to be a Jew, how was to be a Jew, how proud I am to be a Jew and how proud Sasha is maybe the most of all of us. And I just said, and we were talking, we were having great conversation. We were speaking a little bit like Yiddish here and there. And I know Sasha <laughs> speaks Yiddish and I speak a little Yiddish. And so it was like a nice little connecting moment. And I just said, I don't know if I can let this moment pass by without taking a picture. And Sasha did a very interesting thing which was like okay that's fine but you're not going to be one of those people that like posts it on the internet and like oh look who i was sitting next to i hate when people that's so cheesy right when people do that it's like we're having such a nice moment and now you're going to ruin the moment and you take a picture just so you could post it for people like i he's like you would he sort of reverse psychologized me and to this day i've never posted that picture because (laughs) that is what i was doing Right. If you go to our YouTube channel and watch this, that picture will pop up right now at this moment. <laughs> do you think we can? Make I don't that know happen? about that. It makes me nervous. But maybe, maybe this is the reveal of it. What do you think, Sasha's scrolling over to minute forty whatever of this podcast <laughs> to see if the picture is there? <laughs> but now that I told the story, it almost feels like legal. It's like the law came back around to being on my side. It's the mm, statute yeah, of limitations yeah. ended, and I can now. I can now post that photo. It's an unfucking believable photo. 
Oh, and that must have eaten you up when 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 Norman passed because Norman, like I fucking know him. When Norman Lear passed, which was fairly recently, you know how like when someone dies, every celebrity like will post a uh, or anyone will post a picture of them or be like, oh, I remember I was at a junket and I saw Andre Brower for forty five seconds. <laughs> Exactly. I when Norman Lear when Norman passed, and I I had this crazy experience with Norman Lear because I I performed at um, a benefit uh, and Carol King performed and it was this incredible thing and Norman Lear was in the audience and I get a call. It's a few years ago now and I get a call. The next day from, I forget who, maybe the guy that ran it, I don't know. And they were like, Norman Lear wants to meet you. And I'm like, what? And they were like, yeah, Norman Lear wants to have like a general meeting with you. And I went and I sat down with Norman Lear in his beautiful office. And he said, we're thinking about remaking Maud. I've never told the story before. Oh, wow. With, with B. Arthur. Yeah. And he was like, and I saw you performing. And this is how it used to happen in Hollywood. It makes my fucking heart want to explode. Norman Lear saw a person and he thought that she could do it and then called her in. And then now they're having the conversation. It's just crazy. And he was like, we're thinking of remaking Maud. Do you have a couple minutes? I'll have one of my assistants pop in a couple episodes and you can watch in the con. So he gets out Maud DV. He goes, Scotty. And somebody comes in with Maud DVDs. He puts me in a conference room. I'm three episodes into Maud going, I'm going to fucking play Maud. I'm going to be Maud. I'm going to be what? Turns out Molly McInerney, Jimmy Kimmel's wife, is writing it. Oh, wow, shit. And I'm like, this is incredible. Nothing ever happens with it. I'm like, that was the craziest day of my life. I guess my manager or whoever at the time like would check and be like, what's going on? But the show never got made and it fell by the wayside. Now, of course, Norman's passed. But uh, last year I went to some event and I'm walking in and Molly, Mac Mount, Molly and Jimmy Kimmel are walking. And I said hi to Molly. I, I know her through Kristen. And I was like, hey, buddy. And she was like, do you know that Norman wanted you to play Maud? <laughs> and I was like, I almost started crying. Aww. I was like, I, I do, but I don't. And like, I don't know how real that was or what the conversations were around that. Or thank you for telling me that and validating that that day happened <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and now it's now and god bless norman lear the end okay well i'm on your uh, your instagram page and i don't see a grid picture with that story uh in the caption underneath it for for his passing so that you really held off on that one no that's what i'm saying exactly yeah, no, i didn't yeah, no. post it's... it and you know what i even considered posting what? it cutting out sasha and then just like, if you know, you know. <laughs> right. Or, or maybe just his like arm. So people are like, that's Borat's arm. Oh, yeah, God damn, like... that's Borat's arm. <laughs> okay, Hold Jackie on. is getting I'm up. Getting, I don't know where she's going. Picture. She's going to get a tiny vacuum I'm to suck the up picture. the nail. Oh, 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 you're just going to show it on the phone. Oh, yeah, let's, let's I it. need a tiny vacuum to suck up the nail. <laughs> Sorry to bring back the nail. <laughs> Talk about something while I find it. Uh, okay. Um, JD, have you ever seen Maud? I have uh, many, many episodes. Yeah, it's a great show. B. Arthur. I, better than Golden show. Girls, if you ask me. Is is that what B. Arthur first oh. got famous for? What, or was she like kind of a stand-up? Or what uh, was B. Arthur? I think that was her first breakout role, actually. And this, um, this is like post All in the Family? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. It's around the same time. Is, so is it, like mid-70s? Like mid is Maude like, uh, is, was she a character on Mary Tyler Moore? Oh Am yeah! I... Oh, she's a spinoff of that. Yes, you're right. Is she? I'm pretty sure you're right. Oh, boom! Okay, here's the picture. We got Jackie Tone, cam uh, stage right. If I'm doing that correctly, Norman Lear in the middle, and there he is, the man of many faces, Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> That's a great picture. Can uh, that, you? I don't. Be I cannot believe you had the restraint. Wow. I cannot believe. Can I can't believe I had the restraint either. It's. It's got to be top five pictures of my life. Yeah. I, of it's my got, life. Uh, we got to release that. We, we got to get it out there. 
Sasha, crazy. Sasha, whoa. it's actually crazy. Um, okay, uh, Matt, yeah. you are right. It is a it's a spinoff of All in the Family. Maude appears in two episodes of All in the Family. Hey, all our Gen Z fans, <laughs> yes. hope you're enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, television used to be different, okay? There used to be only three channels, and we all watched them. The Seinfeld finale got 35 million viewers. 30 million turned into ER every week. It was a must-see TV, and now it's all shit. All right, here we go, Jackie. Let's move on to the next segment. It's time... For the segment where everything's bad, it's time to pick your poison. So here's how it works. By the way, since the last time you were on the show, we have segments, different segments on the show. It's crazy. In this show, it's the hundred, so it's a little bit. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank You're gonna you. love this segment. Uh, so here's how it works. I'm gonna give you some related options that are all bad, and you have to pick your poison. So whichever you consider the least worst option. And today's topic is getting people's reaction to your work. So in other words, I'm, I'm choosing this topic because we're 100 shows in. By now, everyone I know, family, friends, knows that I do this show. Some have asked me to send them a link. Some just seen it on my Instagram. They know I'm doing it. So when I say listen, because I'm talking about a podcast, you just in your head translate that to watched, because I'm sure the same exact things have happened to you. So here are your options. So again, this is people's reaction to your work. Just didn't listen. You sent it to you sent them the link, but they yeah, they you asked them about it a couple weeks later. They <laughs> they didn't listen. Yeah, couldn't be bothered. Oh. Second option, mm. they listened, but they said, not for me. They didn't care for it. Oh. Option three, they listened, but they have some notes. Okay? They've got some <laughs> uh, you know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're an accountant, but they do have some notes about your co the content. In your case, maybe you're acting. Maybe they did a line reading that they thought you could have improved on. Uh, or your fourth option, they they listened and said, you know what? It reminded me a lot of blank, and that blank thing is something you fucking hate. And you're like, that's what they think I am. They think I'm like that fucking hack. So those are your four choices. You got to pick your poison. So whichever you think is the best of these, again, just didn't listen at all. Listened, but said, not for me. Listened, but they have some notes and they want you to get out a pen and paper. Or listened and said that it reminded them of something that you personally hate. The least bad and, of those for sure to me yeah. is, the, is listening and notes. Because I'm a comic and it's very common, very common. I mean, probably too common for me. Where, like, I'll hear a friend's joke. I mean, I haven't gone up in, in fucking ages. But when this was my normal life and I was doing many shows a night and, you know, I, I would hear a friend's joke and be like, did you ever try da-da-da? And, like, throw something in. Uh, take it or leave it. I thought your joke is already hilarious, but it made me think of this. Maybe there's a play on that. Maybe the act out goes here. Maybe whatever. And when I've been on stage and people have been like, yo, did you ever try that with XYZ? I like it. It's not, it's not like, also it depends on, it depends on the tact and it also depends on if you respect the person telling you. Cause obviously your family members are like, I have a note. You're like, Oh, in your, well, yes. in your vast, yeah. In your vast experience as a postal historian, I can't wait to hear what you think of my fucking comedy writing. Thank you so <laughs> much. Um, yeah, but, but so, so just to jump in that, that's what I mean though. Like if you're in the green room at, at a show and another comic is being like, I have a tag for, for you on that joke. Sure. That's one thing. As long as they're not a dick about it. Right. But why do I find, I mean, at least at podcasting, which is a solo endeavor, I'm not in a room okay. you know, with a person listening to it. The p only notes I am getting are from the postal worker and the accountant and the lawyer. Okay, so I definitely know the best one then. And that is never watch anything I ever do ever. I <laughs> yeah, don't give a I, fuck. Mm -hmm. It means it means less than nothing to me. <laughs> My mom's like, "Did you tell everyone about old dads?" No, because it make it doesn't affect my life one way or the other. And you know what happens invariably is all your friends and family are like, "Uh, there wasn't that that wasn't more." 
Did you? What, 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 that was it? Mm, like, yeah, I'll right, do an there, episode yeah. of some random show, Grey's Anatomy. My only problem is there wasn't more of you. Okay, thank. <laughs> is that supposed to be a compliment? How, what do we want to call the powers that be over at ABC? I don't know what's happening here. But do you think it's complimenting me that you've just told me that you've sat here? My mom would sometimes call me while an episode of television that I did is on at a commercial break and ask if there's more. <gasps> oh, no. Like, because if, if you're going to say During, no, she's like, I'll just go back to knitting? I, well, you wish she knits. But it's like she, what, I'm so sorry. I'm boring your neighbors, Betty and Harry. They need to, they need to go to sleep. They can't, they can't just watch the rest of the episode of Grey's Anatomy. You need to have a, you need to be on the front lines of this experience and calling it. Now that was it. Everyone, everyone can go to sleep. She's not on anymore. <laughs> don't do me that, a favor. That's amazing. Do me a favor. Don't, don't even turn the television. Don't, no, I don't need it. I don't want it. I'm not looking for it. Jackie, are you telling people about Old Dads, the movie that's on the streaming service that's in 500 million people's homes? <laughs> and, and that's what's funny, too, is it's also very interesting with your family. Um, the things you do that affect them, those are the big things. Like, objectively, the biggest thing in my career has been Glow as a series regular on a critically acclaimed show for four years. People... But, like, that wasn't my parents' friends' thing. So, like, none of them right. saw Glow. But then I do an episode of CSI, Someone's Asshole, and it's the big... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Miriam and Ani! Miriam and Ani saw you on the closer! They <laughs> freaked out. Do you know the closer? <laughs> Miriam and Ani saw you on the closer! It's like, okay, thank you. They saw you on the show with the bones. What's it called? Oh yeah, bones. <laughs> bones. Did, did your, did your, cause you were, um, or are a comic, but you used to do it more. Did you ever get the, Jackie, I have an idea for you. Why don't you be on SNL? All day. I remember, <laughs> I used to have a bit about how my mom's friends would tell me unfunny things and tell them to put it in my skit they would always yeah. say oh i have something for your skit <laughs> there's there's something for your skit so there's i everything now right ipad i pods right <laughs> so what what about i was talking to my daughter i said the only thing they don't have now is I um is I clothing right? So you could put that in the skit. <laughs> Believe me, I know. I once saw Shecky Green and Jackie Mason at the Concord in 1965. <laughs> God, I mean, yeah, like I'm, I'm getting a lot of notes. The number one family note I get is when you ask, "Is this good?" Why does it always have to be something funny? Why can't it be something serious? Like you ask them if like a piece of um, legislation is good. <laughs> it's a comedy show, Anne Harriet. <laughs> <laughs> you think we're talking about abortion rights on is this good? <laughs> the Dobbs decision, is this good? I think no, but you know, I'm curious to hear what you think. Gonna have some comedians and some comedy writers on to hear their opinions on what they think about fucking Ukraine. And then you just hear, because everyone's Googling the Dobbs decision. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Okay, anyways, I think you, I think you did ah. the one. I actually think notes, I think notes is the worst one. I'm starting, the one that's starting to drive me nuts, I didn't even, this is a, this is a bonus one. Um, not saying whether they liked your thing or not, or just anything about it, just immediately comparing it to something much more successful. Oh, I like, can't. Like, uh, they'll, like, they'll go, oh, uh, oh, I heard your podcast. Um, have you ever heard of Smartless? I'm like, I know. I know it's not Smartless, <laughs> okay? I, I know I didn't get $80 million from Amazon. I, that makes my butthole a uh, flame. <laughs> I, it's so annoying. And it's always so interesting, too, because when everyone's doing any version of those 
And they're doing one of them, at very least, and sometimes more than one. Do they think it's hell? Are you thinking at all about what it is to be the person who worked so hard and did the thing and how rare it is in this business to get anything, to get any little fucking morsel dropped on your doorstep after the tens of thousands or whatever it is things that you make that either no one listens to and no one cares about or the jobs you don't get or the th things you go for and nobody cares about your creative endeavors almost ever. And then you do something and it's like, oh, I didn't listen. Okay, fine. Or I, <laughs> I, have, a, I have a note or I have a thought. It's like, just, I, I don't know. I don't even know how you high wrote it because at the same time it's like, I, I'm too vulnerable to ever even tell someone I'm doing something. Like, I don't, I don't ever want any pressure on anyone because I'm so deathly afraid of any of those responses. And I'm not even afraid of them. I just don't want them. I don't need that in my life. And it doesn't make my experience better if you watched. I don't give a fuck. Genuinely, don't, do not, do not care. Someone that's not, like, involved in anything creative doesn't understand that the creative brain is already going... Let me tell myself the hundred ways I fucked this up or what I could have done Correct. better or what I should have done or whatever. So we don't, you know, we don't need it. But I mean, look, again, getting a tag yeah. from a comedian is one thing. But from the general population, this is a segment for you. Please don't do any of the things that we just said, especially <laughs> over Christmas. You know, it's tough enough. Uh, all right, Jackie, yeah, there's only right. one quick thing left to do. It's time to play Subjective Trivia. <laughs> So subjective trivia, it's just like regular trivia, except only I know the answer. And today's question is, which of these things that also turned 100 in 2023 is my favorite thing? So as I said, this is 100 episodes, so I'm pretending we're turning 100. We're turning 100 episodes, as if that's a thing. <laughs> but these things are all 100 years old in 2023. Number one, King Tut's tomb. It was 100 years ago when English archaeologist Howard Carter opened King Tutankhamun's common tomb in Thebes. It's considered one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of all time. The National Christmas Tree, that also turned 100. Christmas Eve 1923, I'm sure we all remember it well. Old Calvin Coolidge lit a 48-foot fur in the ellipse near the White House. <laughs> Thus started the <laughs> annual National Christmas Tree holiday tradition. All right, your third choice, the Q-tip. In 1923, the Polish-American inventor Leo Gertzensung, perhaps Jewish, we don't know, created the idea for the first cotton swab after seeing his wife attach cotton balls to toothpicks. To me, it sounds like his wife invented it, but I digress. <laughs> or your fourth choice, the boysenberry. The raspberry-blackberry hybrid was developed by horticulturist Rudolf Boysen in Napa Valley a hundred years ago. So again... Your four choices of things that turned 100 in 2023, which is my favorite, King Tut's Tomb, the National Christmas Tree, the Q-Tip, or the Boysenberry. What do you think, Jackie? I do have my answer written right here. Well, it's not King Tut's Tomb because it was only found 100 years ago, but it's sort of an, I mean, it's not an arbitrary date, but it's like, it wasn't buried. I mean, it's so much older than that so it's like we found it a hundred years i don't know it's not that yeah but a british yeah. dude um, found it and things don't exist till british people find them <laughs> yeah no shit that's right um so then the second one was what national christmas tree oh it's not that because we christmas no it's not that um, cause that's another thing that's like, we're celebrating it for a hundred years, but was around before that. I'm more into the ones that are actually, so it's either the Q-tip or the boysenberry. And given that the, given that the guy's wife discovered it and he's so blatant about it, he's not even pretending he did it. He's like, oh yes, I invented this when my wife invented it. It's like, um, okay, so you didn't invent this? Your wife invented Well, he was okay. inspired. I um, think we could say he was inspired. No, his wife invented it, I think is what we could probably say, because of how she invented it. Um, okay, but, but that, it's my like, favorite thing. I'm not saying which inventor do I like the most. I'm saying the thing. Mm. Oh, so is it... Okay, do you like King Tut? Uh, National uh, Christmas tree, Q-tip, boysenberry. National Christmas tree, Q-tip, boysenberry. Boysenberry. 
Okay. Yeah. It might be Q-tip, but I'll tell you something. I don't use a Q-tip because I had a... What? Oh. I don't use Q-tips because I had a friend who... Um, we're, well, none of us are supposed to use Q-tips. It, you hurt your eardrums and stuff. And um, a friend of mine is a, was a deaf studies major and is a speech pathologist. And she said, nothing smaller than your elbow in your ear. And that um, a massive percentage of people who go... Of the people who go deaf as adults are because they rupture their eardrums with Q-tips. So I never use Q-tips. But I do get like a washcloth in there and get the deed done. And then, uh, so it's boysenberry. Hold on. Well, well, you're telling me that when your when your glam squad comes over, your HMU team, they're not using Q-tips for any any part of that process. No, but that's not your favorite because you don't you don't you don't have them like clean up your under eye like your drop shadow. Uh-huh. They don't clean mm-hmm. that for you, Matt, mm-hmm. with a Q-tip. Okay. Okay. And also, Before, I mean, yeah. a little bit. Okay. Uh, before I give my answer, I'm just gonna say. I'm embarrassed to say this. I honestly did not know that that's what a boysenberry was. I did not know a boysenberry was a cross between a raspberry and a blackberry. Yeah, me neither. I oh, just okay. I'm not the only Neither did I. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I had no idea. Oh, I yeah, thought okay. it was like I its own it girl. Like, she just grew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But don't you think it's weird? Like, normally when something's like one thing crossed with another thing, they just name it part of that word with part of the... Like, it's like... So if it's half raspberry... Like a pluot. Yes. Or half blackberry. Why didn't they just call it a raspberry? Barry. Ego. It was the guy's name. Yeah. Wait. Why don't they just call it a raspberry? Because raspberry. No, it's a joke. Taken. It's a joke. Because it's yes, it's raspberry <laughs> oh, blackberry. Yeah, so no like... matter which parts of the word you choose, it's still one of the two uh, words. Uh, yeah. We've gotten. No I better love at this. an explained joke. <laughs> well, I love when people get great jokes. The answer's Q-tip. God damn it. <laughs> Q-tip. Wow. I get it. Well, my choice is it was either it was one or the other for me. Yeah, you got there. You got there. Uh, all right, Jackie, thanks so much for coming on. Where can people find you? What do you want to promote? Do you want to tell people about old dads on a tiny little outfit <laughs> called Netflix? <laughs> yes. There's this teeny tiny movie that's number one globally on Netflix. Do you know that this movie, this is crazy, Bill told me that it – was top 10 in 91 of the 93 countries that Netflix exists and got up to number one. In- Tell me the two countries. Shit, that's a great point that I that it's not. It's like England and U.S. Like the only one. <laughs> no, I, have, I, I, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, so watch Old Dads on Netflix. Find me uh, on Instagram at Jackie Tone, T-O-H-N. And watch uh, this season of Gen V, which is the spinoff of oh, The yeah. Boys on Amazon. That I reprise my role uh, that I played on The Boys, which, surprising no one, is the world's largest cunt named Courtney <laughs> Fordney. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, Jamie, have you watched The Boys? And I'm, I know. Now I'm yeah. going to do it. Why don't you do, what do you think she could be doing better in her performance? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Any notes? <laughs> no notes. No, no notes. notes. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, remember to check us out, patreon.com slash is this good. Send topics is this good bot at is this good pod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks to JD. Thanks to Jackie for coming on and celebrating our hundredth episode. Thanks in advance for leaving a five star review for everyone. I'm Matt Austin and this was good. We'll see you next week. Bye everyone! <laughs> <laughs>